Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another mobility flow. Today we're going to go over some good spinal mobility, which includes some core activation movements too. So this will be a slight workout as well as a good loosener for your back. Um, anytime we're working on um, strengthening or loosening up the back, we also need to think about the core. So that's why we've decided to kind of incorporate a little bit of stretching, but also a little bit of core activation. So if you would um, identify yourself as someone that has an achy back during the day or lower back pain, these would all be really good movements for you to help strengthen your abs, help you try to correct, correct that lower back issue. So first we're going to do a nice wall thoracic um, opener. So I have Roger against the wall with his inside leg pressed against the wall as tight as possible. He's now going to extend both of his arms out ahead of him, making sure that his fingers are stacked, right? You could easily extend one arm longer than the other. It's really important that we stack the shoulders. He's now going to, to drop his left arm off on top of the wall, following with his eyes, opening all the way up and around, breathing out as he comes, right? So he's going to get a really good stretch and opener through here in his middle of his back. Um, the position that we have him in is kind of forcing him and keeping nice and nice and engaged so that the stretch goes through where we want it to go through. If we do this on the floor, which we do, there is um, more chance of you know shifting your hips or shifting your shoulders and not getting exactly what we want out of it. I would recommend maybe five to eight reps per side, obviously depending on how tight the person is, right? I had my client yesterday do this, he's 82 and I had him do 10 reps. And by the eighth rep, he was fully flat on the wall. The first rep, he could barely open. So things like this, you can definitely see improve in, in one time. Obviously, you will tighten back up, but if you make it a habit, something over time, you can really change your, change your mobility. Feel good? Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and switch sides. Okay. Good. So now you can watch him get set up, right? He's going to drop his left leg forward, keeping it as close to the wall as possible which will in return put that left shoulder against the wall. Then stacking the fingers, his right hip is directly above his right knee, and then he's breathing and following with the eyes is really important in movements like this, rotational movements like this. Think about a ballerina on stage, right? You're not, her body's not gonna go anywhere that her eyes are not already going. So especially if you know you're tight, make sure your eyes are helping you. Follow, follow your um, arm with your eyes. It'll help you open up greater. Feel good? Way tighter. Yeah, and that's very common, right? We're all are, you know, creatures of habit, so we turn the same way to do certain things. Um, we sit the same way, we lean on the same leg. So Roger's just discovering that his right side is a lot tighter than his left, which he's right-handed, so that makes sense, right? Good. Really good place to start, especially if you're having um, you've been sitting at your desk all day. I know a lot of my clients complain about that. It's an easy thing to do. You can do it on a conference call, literally, right? No one's going to notice that you're doing this. Um, or shut off your Zoom for 30 seconds and get a good stretch in, and I guarantee it will wake you up and give you more energy. Feel good? Yeah, awesome. Okay, so we're going to move on to one that we've done in the past, but I think it's one repeating, and I know that a lot of times in our, in our Saturday morning flows, we move quickly, so we're gonna do a spinal wave. So I'm gonna take you through the entire spinal wave today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start in child's pose. So I'm gonna start dropped back into child's pose. Now this is a hard position for some people to get in. Um, so I'm going to, now some people might be like this, that's okay, but if you can get your, heel, your butt all the way back to your heels, even better. What I'm gonna start by doing is really pulling up on my spine. So I'm gonna to try to round my back as high as I can pushing off on my knees. When I get as high as I can, I'm gonna pick my knees up, dig my toes in, open, and then drop down into cobra, breathing out, looking up at the sky. I will then drop back down into child's pose, relaxing, and repeating back through, rounding up, rounding up, rounding up, pushing, dropping, and ending looking at that sky. Beautiful. Good, so m most of you probably know what cat-cow is, right? So the start of this movement is like cat, right? He's pulling, 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 like someone's got a puppet string on the middle of his back and he's driving up at the sky and then dropping down and through. We hear a lot that, you know, the cobra position, which is the end of the movement, is uncomfortable for a lot of people, or is that safe for my spine? That's absolutely safe for your spine, right? Because the natural curvature of the spine is like this, right? It's not like this. 
and we know like this feels good for the back, but it's also really important to keep your back in line in that position. If any of you are ever having lower back spasms, which I know a lot of my clients do and I do, this cobra position right here is a really good way of realigning the back. Now there's a less aggressive way of going about it. I'm gonna have Roger end on his forearms this time versus hands, so you can see what it would be like to do a cobra without the aggressive move. Good, and then looking up, right? So that's a, a nice, easier way of learning cobra versus on your arms, obviously, is a greater, um, greater stretch on the back. How's that feel, Roger? Good. So we're just taking the spine, the hips, um, even the knees and the neck through the greatest range of motion that we have um, as human beings, depending, obviously, in, on individuals. I would aim for around 10 of these. Um, you will feel different um, beginning to end. Awesome. We're going to have Roger do one more. <laughs> and then we're going to flip over on our back. Let's go feet this way. Good. Awesome. So um, we're going to do thoracic uh, core rocks. Sometimes in a session we might use this just as a lower back stretch if someone's really jacked up. But it's also a really good core exercise for people. So what I'm going to have Roger do is press his hands into the floor. His arms are teed out. Um, he's going to pick his knees and, and hips up 90 degrees. So start. Yep. So just this position for a lot of people is a good, comfortable position for their lower back because it's creating bracing in the core, right? It's keeping, it's forcing his lower back onto the ground and allowing him to really stay nice and compact in the ab area. Um, what he's going to do now is as he breathes out, he's going to let his, his hip, excuse me, his knees drop towards me laterally. Bracing with his hands in the floor. Beautiful. And then he's going to squeeze the abdominals and pull the knees back up to center. And rocking to his opposite side now. Really good. So you can see now on the camera on this side, he's getting a really good stretch through that back. And then he's forced to use his abdominals to come back. This might be too difficult, so what I'd recommend is just relaxing here on the side, breathing and resetting as you need. Um, a lot of us don't get enough rotational movements, and this is a really great way of not only using the abdominals, but also stretching out that back. How's that feel? Good. Where do you feel it most? In stretch or abs? Back, yeah. Beautiful. So I would aim for maybe 10 per side, right? 20 good reps. Rest as often as you need, right? Quality over quantity. Um, there's lots of research that shows, you know, if I'm going to do 20 reps of something, I'm going to get the same out of it by having higher quality than if I were to just, I need to get the 20 all at once right now because your, your form will break down, especially if you're a beginner at a movement, right? Um, also oxygen, it's also a stretch, so breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. If you're not good at breathing and you have back pain, there's probably a lot connected with that, right? Take some time to investigate breathing and breathing techniques. Um, you might not be taking full advantage of your uh, lungs and oxygen system. Really good, awesome, good. So I'm gonna have Roger do a single leg bridge hold now. So yes, a good back stretch, but also a really good glute activator and ab activator. Um, we do these, every single person that comes to our gym does this exercise. So first what I'm gonna have Roger do is relax, and he's gonna pelvic tilt first, right? So pelvic tilting, that's not pelvic tilting. Pelvic tilting is when he, if he relaxes on the floor, his pelvis is kind of relaxed and his lower back is off the ground, right? So go ahead and relax. Good. So he now has an arch. Now I can get my hand under. Now I'm going to have him pelvic tilt. Now he's compressing on my hand. I can't get my hand up, right? So he's taking his... He's huh? Can we show it laterally? Sure. There you go. So he's relaxed right now, right? He's got a little bit of roundness on his, on his back, and then he's going to pelvic tilt and it's going to bring it all down and flat, right? Um, another way I describe that is if, you know, you're standing, right, and you're letting your hips tilt, you're letting all that water drip out of your bowl, right? We don't want to lose our water, so we're pelvic tilting up, which will keep your, keep your water in your pelvis, right? Just an analogy, not really water in your pelvis, but um, you don't ever want your, your bucket to be leaking, right? Keep it, keep it up and tight. 
So he's going to pelvic tilt first. He's going to then lift one leg off the ground, keeping it tucked close to his body. Um, some people teach this with the leg extended to the sky. I think that's a little, um, a lot going on. So I think tucked is better. He's going to squeeze his left butt cheek as hard as he can and hold at the top for five seconds. So five, four, three, two, and one. Relax. And he's going to switch legs. He's now going to elevate the left. Yep. Press through the right. Squeeze for five, four, three, two, and one. Um, so he's going to go continue to go back and forth, aiming for 10 each leg. He's making sure he has good contact with his heel and his big toe, right? Pushing into your big toe is, is semi-important, right? It has a lot to do with your glute max activation, your big butt cheek. Um, he's also getting a lot of core work and a lot of lumbar stability, right? If you're feeling like this is overly difficult and all you're feeling is back pain, go to a double leg hold, right? So both heels on the ground and squeezing up at the same time for a five second hold, right? Um, this should be a pretty big burner on the tush. Yeah? Yeah? That's right. So now Roger's showing you if, if the single is a little too difficult, just go for the doubles. Beautiful. Really good glute engage, really good way to get yourself out of um, back pain for sure if you're de dealing with back pain. Nice, simple movement, squeezing your first pelvic tilting right, squeezing the glute. Good strong hold for five, relax, ten each leg. That will definitely get you warm though, right? That's not, that's not super easy. That's definitely a challenge. Good. Yeah, right. Go ahead and relax. So I'm going to have Roger actually transfer to my mat and we're going to do isometric dead bugs. Isometric dead bugs are difficult. Um, I'll show you a, a few different regressions that we can use with it. Um, but it's a really great way to, once again, teach yourself to pelvic tilt and to really use your abdominals in some contralateral ways, just meaning opposites working together. Because in real life, we don't ever usually work in the same pattern all the time. So what Roger's going to do first is he's going to have his arms extended at the sky and his knees 90 degrees and his feet and his hips 90 degrees. Okay. People in movements like this love to let their legs hang. Go ahead and let them hang. And they love to keep things close together, right? Keep your body tracking where it should be. Knees over hips. Good. Hands over shoulders, right? Okay, so now he looks like a dead bug, right? Those cockroaches upside down on their kitchen floor. Okay, so this naturally also will put him in a pelvic tilted position, right? Because of his legs being up, he's probably, yep, he's nice and firm on the ground. So go ahead and check yourself there first. Is my lumbar compressed against the ground? That's what we need, right? He's then going to press his right hand into his left knee. Yep, left hand into right knee, opposites. Beautiful. So as he presses, the harder you press, right? Knee up, hand down, the more core work that is creating diagonally on his body, yeah? Okay, now what he's going to do is, getting tired? Yeah. Now what he's going to do, as he's pressing, he's going to pull away with the left arm and the right leg, keeping everything compressed on that ground though, right? Although that left arm and right arm are moving, nothing else is moving, right? This is stable, I cannot get under his back, and he's got a nice grip between his hand and his knee. A lot of lower back pain comes from the anterior pelvic tilting, not knowing how to use your core, right? So these are really great ways of, hey, what should, when, when we say bracing, that's what, that's what bracing is, is right there, what you're feeling, doing that dead bug isometric, good. So we're gonna show you on the opposite side. He's bracing, he's breathing and extending, getting good pressure between his hand and knees. Now, if you try this and you're just like, boy, that's hard, right? Nice, easy way of regressing it, take away the contact, right? Just a nice, easy dead bug. Arms are extended and working on opposites, right? Beautiful. When I teach this out of the gate to someone that you can see is struggling with coordination, I usually have them do just one side at a time, right? So maybe right arm, left leg, all 10, relax, reset, and then switch it. Because the problem is when someone's really frustrated with not being able to understand something, right? They're really frustrated. When you're frustrated, you can't focus. So just a bad, bad, um, bad ball to get rolling. So nice, easy way of regressing it. Lots of core work, right? It's not like Roger has weak abs, but he's feeling that in his pelvic floor stabilizers and his abdomen. 
Really good. Okay, so what are we doing now? Now we're gonna flip over and do a bird dog. So very similar movement. I'm sure a lot of you know bird dogs. There's ways to make bird dogs easier. There's ways to make bird dog harder. So we're gonna show you a, a few different ones. So what we're gonna do first is a full range of motion. So his knees are stacked under his hips, his hands are stacked under his shoulders. Once again, really important. Don't get sloppy with your setup. He's going to lift his left arm off the floor with his right foot. He's dorsiflexing his ankle, meaning it's flexed, right? He's not pointing his toe like a ballerina. He's flexing his right glute. That's really important for balance in a situation like this. He's also balancing my favorite glass of wine on his back. So he is going to stay as stable as possible because we're not spilling any, any good wine, right? So he's extending. He's going to squeeze through the movement now using his abdomen and bring his left elbow to his right knee. Yes, and then pushing back through, flexing the glute. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. Beautiful. So this type of stability is not easy, right? Slow, controlled, stabilizing the lumbar, balancing first, right? If the balance is really brutal for you, don't worry about the touch in the center. Don't worry about the elbow to the knee. Just think about the extension, right? Holding in that extension. Let's go hold in the extension on the next one. Good. Squeezing. Good. Five, six second hold is a really good way to work on balance, lower back strength, glute strength. Good. Recover, relax. He's switching sides, okay? So extension on left, pulling and breathing. So he's getting a ton of posterior work on the extension and then a ton of core work on the flexion in, right? Squeezing the abs. Similar to the dead bug, but now we're, we're facing down. So very different movement, right? Another thing, keeping the head down, right? People love to look up when they're doing exercises. Keep your neck safe, right? Keep, your, keep yourself nice and neutral. Look down at the ground. Internally cue yourself, right? People always ask us why I don't have mirrors in our gym. It's the exact reason. People love to see themselves. We don't need to see ourselves. Internally cue yourself. Listen to the people cueing you, whether that's me or your own coach or Roger or Taylor. Um, and use those verbal cues to help you become a real good internal cuer so you're listening to your body. Beautiful. Feel good? Yeah. Uh, we use that a lot for warming people up. Um, takes them out of, you know, uh, standard positioning of sitting at a desk or standing behind a counter or whatever it might be. Um, we're going to do, um, what are we doing right now? We're going to do, hold on one sec. Ah, okay, we're going to do side plank hip abductions. These babies are brutal, so we'll show you two different variations. So I'm going to have Roger on his side facing, the, facing you guys. So one thing that people don't know a lot about in side planks is where their elbows go. We don't take into consideration much where this baby is, right? We kind of just stick it under us and put, pop our hips up and go for it. Um, it's really important, right, because a side plank is supposed to be activating the entire inside of our body, not just our abdomen. So to do that, we need to make sure this lat, which the insertion point of the lat is way down here, right? So we want to take advantage of that. So what he's going to do is when Roger comes up, we're going to show you the most advanced version and then we'll regress it. So when Roger comes up in his side plank, he's going to constantly be pulling down on his elbow like he's trying to drag the mat down with him, right? He's not allowing it to get pushed out at me. So let's go ahead and come up, squeezing your glutes. So that side plank, right, he's flexing his butt cheeks, right? His glutes are big muscles. Use them. He's pulling down on his elbow using his lat. Once again, a big muscle. It's going to make the exercise way easier. Now, keeping his heel as the leader, he's going to flex his butt cheek and elevate this leg into a hip abduction lift, right? Not easy. Squeezing, breathing. He's focusing on not only locking out his glutes, pulling down on his lat, He's getting a lot of ab work, right? Difficult, but a really good strengthener for your lower back, okay? And glutes, obviously. Um, and your hips are included in your butt, right? When we're talking about that, right? These babies over here. Um, so let's go to regression first before we switch sides. So regression, right? And this is maybe a good place for everyone to start so they can figure out the abduction before they worry about the balance of being up in that side plank, um, that two-point side plank. So he's leaving his bottom knee down. He's squeezing his glutes, and then he's going to once again pull down on that elbow for a lat engage. Butt's on, and he's going to hip abduct at me again, right? I guarantee he's still getting a really good burn right now. It's not, it's not like a massive difference in them. The other one's just definitely harder, right? But it's a good place to work towards. I would recommend maybe two sets of 10 each side. 
So do it once on left, flip over, do it again on the right. Don't face away from them, face to um, Second set, third sets of things are really good to kind of ingrain it in your brain, right? The first set, you're kind of like, what is going on? There's too many things. Um, you couldn't necessarily tell me where you feel it, or you might just say everywhere. The second set will allow you to really grasp, hey, I feel this in my butt, or hey, I feel this in my sides. Woo, it's burning the heck out of my shoulder, which is how a lot of people feel on any type of plank work when they haven't done a ton of it, is their shoulders are just dying. Beautiful, squeezing and lifting, good. Yeah, awesome, good. Recover, relax, so like I said, maybe two sets of 10, when you become more advanced, you could just do 20 and 20, but really good lower back strengthening, right? Really good way to release your lower back. So high plank um, contralateral lifts, we're gonna end with the hardest, okay? Last move of the day. What we're gonna do at the end is quickly go through all of them one more time, just one rep of everything so you can see it, okay? Remember that once the video plays, it is saved to our Instagram page, so you can go back, you can hit pause, you can hit play, really cool in that manner, so you can take yourself through it at your own speed and not get frustrated with it. Like I know someone with the initials FC that gets frustrated with that, so. <laughs> Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come in a high plank. When I say high plank, I mean you're on your hands, not on your elbows, right? Elbow plank, low plank, high plank, hand plank, right? So he's in a high plank. He's bracing everything. If I were to push him, he's not going to go anywhere. He's nice and engaged. He's now going to lift opposite sides, contralateral sides. Right leg, left arm, slowly. People just want to pull it off the floor. You're going to fall or you're gonna, your body's going to jolt. You're not going to get what you want out of it doing that. Pre-engage, right? And that's something you'll have to learn if you don't know it. You've got to be pre-engaged tightly. Are you working? I'm working. Where do you feel the most? I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so I did these yesterday in my workout. I got a ton of abdomen out of them. I did realize that when I got tired, my lower back started to take over. So I had to stop for a second, take a deep breath, and reset maybe 10 each side, right? So that's a total of 20. That will take you a second to do. Keep your eyes down. Keep your butt helping you. Don't just swing your leg up in the air. Squeeze your butt cheek. It will help your lower back. Um, any type, this is called contralateral, meaning opposite, right? He's getting a ton of, ton of unique work. His, his central nervous system's working really hard. His abdomen's working really hard. Um, all of those movements we just showed you from mobility in the end to the strengthening, Really great way, uh, a really great program that if you were to start doing two to three times a week, I would promise would help your lower back and really strengthen your abdomen, right? Um, crunches are not the way to go anymore. There's a lot better techniques out there now. Yeah. How you feel? Yeah. yeah, so what we're gonna do is just have them quickly go through all of them, okay? So thoracic wall opener, right? Thoracic wall opener, we're gonna show you right now. Beautiful, knee is against, nice and contacted, hands are out. He's gonna do following with his eyes up and around. Remember what I said, maybe five to 10 each side at your comfort. Beautiful, really good one, one of my favorites. He's then gonna do the spinal wave, which, and they don't have to be in this order, right? Um, spinal wave, he's starting in child's pose, dropping his hips back, really pulling his spine up to the sky as high as he can, pushing through his knees, coming up into almost like a downward dog and then transitioning into that, into that cobra. Remember to be easy with the cobra if you're nervous of your lower back. Go to your forearms and just reduce the intensity a little bit, right? Beautiful, but you need to be moving the spine, right? Standing still isn't going to help anyone. Um, lumbar knee rocks. Lumbar knee rocks, arms are out to the side, knees and hips are flexed 90 degrees, lumbar is compressed, yeah? and then he's rocking laterally. I'd say 20 total, right? 10 each side, but once again, quality over quantity, so rest, reset, take your time. Beautiful. How's that? Yeah? Um, so let's do single leg bridges quickly. Yep, one leg is up, he's pelvic floor tilting, right? Squeezing and lifting through that left, holding for five, four, three, two, and one. Count in your own head. Do not race it, right? Five, four, three, two, one. Relax, reset. Beautiful. The next one we did was a dead bug, an isometric dead bug, right? So contralateral, contralateral, yep, 
left, uh, right arm to left knee, and he's extending, breathing. That core is rock solid, that hand and knee is pressed in hard. Beautiful, really good. Bird dog touches. Bird dog, if you're having any trouble remembering either the dead bug or the bird dog, think one's upright, one's down, right? Very similar movement, just opposite. Um, bird dog, once again, contralateral, extending, squeezing the abs, pulling elbow to knee, and breathing. Once again, you're balancing that really expensive glass of wine on your back. Do not drop it. Slow and controlled, right? Um, next one is side plank with hip adduction, right? We have knee up and knee down. Squeezing glute, lat is engaged, and elevating that top leg to get real good work here. Stability through the midsection and core. And then knee down. Good, squeezing and lifting. Beautiful place to start. Two, to two, ten, two sets of 10 or one set of 20 per side. That's probably a really good place to go with all of these. Last one, contralateral high plank lifts. Good, so he's stacked, stacked, right? Remember I said that a bunch of times, make sure you're stacked. He's aiming for 20 repetitions, meaning 10 each side, or break it down, right? Get one set of 10, take a break, get another set of 10. Really good, awesome, good. So this is just a quick glimpse into exercises we use to help strengthen people's cores and their lower backs. Um, we tried to slow it down today, so we'd love some feedback on you know, if that worked out for you, if you were able to keep up. And like I said, remember that you can go back and watch it once it's posted to the Instagram. Um, and it will also be on YouTube and Facebook as well. Um, we'll be back next week with some more strengthening for you. So have an awesome weekend. Get outside, go for a walk, rotate your spine. Um, and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much for joining us.